I love the monsters. It was the show about a family of monsters. It was never explained why they were monsters and some called a ripoff of the Adams family. But it reminded me more of the cheese products. So I would tune in every week. September 24th, Thursday, 7 p.m., 1964. Before you start listening to my true story, you must know something. Something that will make or break your decision to continue listening. I'm... I'm just going to tell you. I am a man who wears a skeleton costume. Halloween never ended for me. I haven't taken it off in 20 years. I have no visible skin or flesh. My eyes, peeking behind a thin veneer of frayed mustard-stained fabric, appear as hollow bone sockets, and my plastic phalanges tap on the linoleum floor each night as I go to get a glass of water to quench my real human thirst as I have an esophagus, stomach, tongue, or mouth muscles. Don't be scared. I'm not a real skeleton. Or am I? Some say it was Christmas, but it was always Halloween. In my pants, I'm fully clothed. But in my mind, I was naked and walking down the street. But I have no genitals, and most people just ignore me. What would you do if you saw a skeleton walking down the street? A reality-breaking, real-life animated skeleton with no strings or animatronics used to animate by your innately connected bone structure. But it's not that. It's just a man who, sadly, for which Halloween never ended. The Jenkins down the street called the cops on me once, but they wouldn't come out. Officers aren't going to investigate a skeleton. I'll just tell you what they told me. As long as he's not disturbing the peace, there's no law against standing outside people's homes dressed as a skeleton with various VHS copies of the Moonsters. I understand if you've stopped listening after all. It's not every day a skeleton informs you that he's been living peacefully among the common people for decades watching television. Sold sitcoms, cartoons, vignettes, commercials. Hell, when I see people eating ice cream, I still wish I had a tongue, but I do have a tongue. They hang us up on Halloween. We're tattooed on the backs of thugs, and late at night when God himself is asleep, people dig us up and reenact Hamlet, and I'm not talking about pork products. VHS tapes are more than that. We transcend them, and they transcend us. They give us a little bit of sanity in this insane world. A little beating of meaning, a little light will never reach at the end of the tunnel. The beautiful, ugly truth. <coughs> the Munsters was a great show. It doesn't matter how I acquire the tape. I'm not saying I broke into a home, tap dance across the floor with a cane, threw a plastic patella at the family dog, and began finagling with the prized VHS collection near the bar stool down the hall. I'm not saying I commit a second degree felony while dressed as a skeleton. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying I didn't feel bad because I have no heart. I put the tape in and press play. The theme song was quite appealing, I assume. My hearing isn't very good as it was thick fabric and in my deepest fantasies, I have no ears, but 90% of hearing is the perception of what you think you're actually hearing and the rest is just noise. Herman Munster was crying. Tears were welling up in his eyes and the actor actually looked uncomfortable. His makeup was wearing off. You could see his hairline underneath the Frankenstein prosthetic they used to give him a rotund scalp. You see him scrambling to reattach the makeup and he's crying. His wife, Lily Munster walks in. She asks him what's wrong, and he tells her that he has intermittent explosive disorder. He picks up a chair and smashes it on his wife's head. She falls over and is not seen again the rest of the episode, as her unconscious corpse is out of frame. Herman Munster looks 
the Chevalt, and he picks up a pamphlet that clearly reads, Dealing with Munchausen Syndrome. Eddie Munster walks in, appears shocked, and asks his father what's wrong. It's your mother, he says. He looks Eddie Munster square in the eyes and says something truly disturbing. I killed your mother. He says it comfortably and Eddie Munster starts crying and Herman gives him some bat ice cream to calm him down. This was ice cream made from bats, I assume, but there was a picture of baseball bats on the front of it. Inside the tin, there were just shredded pieces of metal, like metal you'd find on a baseball bat. This didn't make any sense. Batter up! The father yelled, and no one in particular. Something truly disturbing happens now. He leads Eddie Munster upstairs and explains that the family is not a group of paranormal monsters, but normal humans. Herman Munster starts crying as he tells Eddie Munster that the family was so normal and mundane that one day he and his mother decided to put on makeup and convince everyone they were vampires and Frankensteins. It started as a child, as Herman suffered from factitious disorder, a mental illness where any fakes having serious health issues to convince others that sympathy and special attention were deserved. Well, it started with headaches, temporomandibular joint disorder, but eventually he moved on to cancer, a sclerosis and restless leg syndrome. Eventually that wasn't enough. He had to tell others that he was a vampire. Being a vampire isn't an illness as far as I know, destroying the intricate plot line the writers would lay down. Hmm. <sighs> He tells Eddie that he murdered his mother because he wanted to be real. If she was truly a vampire, she wouldn't have died, as only garlic, wooden stakes, and silver bullets can kill a vampire. Every night while Eddie Munster slept, his father would go in and apply makeup to convince his son that he was a vampire. They super glued and chiseled his teeth at a young age and gave him that shitty haircut to make him look more like a vampire. What are we, Dad? Eddie Munster starts to cry. And even though the show is in black and white, there was a sudden spark of color somehow. It was the most beautiful color of them all. Bolt metal rust red. Where? Ordinary. He wraps his hands around his son's neck and begins strangling him. You can hear the voice actor gagging as he slowly choked to death. He spits out a little bit of blood and then falls over. He looks dead. Grandpa walks in. The older vampire in comedic relief. What's the matter with Eddie? He asks. Herman informs him that he can leave the set now as he paid work as a fake grandfather and it was no longer needed. He smiles wide as Herman Munster takes out his wallet and pays him $3.20. That was a prince's sum of money in 1964. And Marilyn Munster walked in. She was a normal female, Marilyn Monroe type. Supposedly had plain looks because she came from Lily's side of the family. He tells her about the syndrome, then informs her that he kept her normal looking because it was a young woman who he loved him that made him feign all these sicknesses. She asks him if she can go, and he picks up a hot fire poker from the fireplace and begins beating her to death with it. He's covered in blood now, and laughing to himself. The audience is laughing, too. I'm not sick. Herman laughs and smiles at the camera. The camera zooms deep into his face as he peels the remaining makeup off. He turns to his side, revealing several surgical scars around his heart, stomach, and thigh. He starts moving the dead bodies around for no reason, puts some hands on the genitals, and then he takes out a 44 caliber revolver and shoots himself in the head. 
The actor starts coughing up blood as he crawls across the floor, crying, dials 911 on the old landline rotary phone and tells them his son has decided to murder everyone. He stumbled over to the side and falls over, limp, placing the gun in Eddie Munster's hand. Film clip completely. I was shocked. My jaw hit the floor. Not literally because I'm not actually a skeleton. My plastic Halloween jaw fell off and hit the floor. I picked it up and reattached it with Elmer's glue, the highest quality glue in my city. Rewinding and ejecting the tape. What a satisfying conclusion to my favorite television program. Suddenly, my doorbell rang. I looked through the peephole, an older, dirty, smelly man with a Frankensteiner forehead painted green was out there. He was holding a shovel and God help me, he looked like he was covered in dirt, rain, and mud. I initially assumed it was Herman Munster, but he was holding a block of cheese leering. Denial isn't just a river in Egypt, butch. He sounded really angry and started banging on the door. He kept banging and banging and leering and banging and leering and banging and banging. Open the door, he said. It's your father, uncle, father. Huh? That's not my father, uncle. Truthfully, I've been lying so long that I don't even know who my father is. Maybe he was. I don't even know my name. I have just been signing paperwork under the name Skeleton for the past decade. He cried. I love you, son, nephew, second cousin, distant relative. <laughs> he cried some more and I felt bad and opened the door. Hey, wait a minute. It was a very, very angry blockbuster video employee who looked like he hadn't slept in years. The green paint was dripping down his dirty Halloween-inspired face. Pizza sauce and what looked like bodily fluid stained his khaki pants. It didn't matter what my excuses were. I didn't return the video. It was a trap. Wow! He screamed to himself and threw a fishing net on me. I was tangled in the net. I tried to get out of the net, but the more I twisted, the more tangled I became. They kept calling, sending me angry emails. Where's the Munsters VHS tape? We need the Munsters VHS tape. Why haven't you returned the Munsters VHS tape? I kept telling them I was a skeleton trying to buy some time, trying to put my bones together so I could face the world. And then he confiscated the VHS tape in $3.20. The late fee surcharge they would have applied in 1987. Then he got in his shitty Ford Bronco and drove off, howling like a werewolf in the pale moonlight. Crashed his car a few blocks down, and I later read in the obituaries column that he died an extremely painful death due to an impacted rib cage. His bones literally crushed his heart. Oh, nobody went to his funeral except me, and it was only to reclaim my prize VHS tape from the corpse. Hmm. I went home and put the tape in. It's time for another night of exciting family fun with the Munsters.
Do, 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 do. I want to smell your underpants and your armpits if they're greasy too. Do, 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 do. I just want you to know that you look like shit and you smell like you belong in a zoo. Do, 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 do. Well, hey man, I just want to fuck you off. Just kidding, I'm not the way you are. I want to see you in the zoo because I have a box of peanuts and I'm going to throw them at your head and you have an encephalitis. You should have been in the elephant, man. You're fucking ugly. You're fucking ugly. You're fucking ugly. Go fuck yourself. You're fucking ugly. You're worse than fucking Medusa. You're fucking ugly, stupid bitch whore. Die.